Hey guys, April Henry here, back for my 44th Facebook Live. You can watch all my previous ones on my website, aprilhenry.com, or on my YouTube channel, which is also called April Henry. I was lying in bed last night, not being able to sleep, which is so common these days, and I started thinking that next week will mark, uh, if I go through the end of the week, it'll be 50 Facebook Lives that I've done. And I started thinking, you know, maybe the end of next week would be a good time to stop because um, it's going to be the end of the month. I'll have done a solid 10 weeks of them. Schools are out, uh, even a lot of the ones who are doing virtual schools. Plus, I'm tired of putting on makeup. So um, now's your chance to start asking me anything that you would like me to cover in my next uh, five or six videos. I'm not certain about Friday the 29th. I'm supposed to be doing some kind of online thing with the school. I don't know what time that is. Um, I wanted to briefly talk about a book I love. This is The Silver Crown by Robert C. O'Brien. I, I, I adored this book when I was in sixth grade. Um, it's about a girl named Eleanor who on her 10th birthday wakes up and there is a crown lying on her pillow and uh, she takes it uh, outside with her and um, while she's gone, it, her house burns down and it looks like her family is dead. And it's about the nature of good and evil. Um, there's a great twist in the book that I've used in one of my own books. I mean, I, I used it hmm, so far off that nobody but me would recognize that it was the same twist. Um, I cannot recommend this book highly enough. A lot of people are familiar with Robert C. O'Brien's Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, which was made into a movie, but I feel like The Silver Crown is an even better book. I tried to reach out to him years ago um, to tell him how much his work had meant to me, and unfortunately, I missed his death by not that long. So if there's somebody that means a lot to you, don't forget now's a great time to tell them that. Uh, Let's see. So tomorrow I'll be doing an Ask Me Anything, um, but today I'm going to be talking about how do you juggle life in the creative process. I wrote my first book when I had just become a new parent. I was working full time and um, I had no free time and I still did it. So how do you do this? Well, one of my main philosophies is I call it rotate your area of crappiness. You're always going to be a crappy mom, a crappy cook, a crappy exerciser, a crappy parent, a crappy writer, a crappy worker, but you can't do the same one all the time or whoever is on the end of that is going to get sick of you. So you rotate your area of crappiness. One day maybe you skip the exercise, the next day you make a dinner that is entirely made of heating up Trader Joe's entrees and mixing them together but try not to be consistent in what area that you're falling down on. Um, one of the things I've done when I've been trying to write is to get up super early and, um, and just go straight to the computer and write. Uh, for some people who are not morning people, it works better to write at night. Um, Alison Brennan, I think, wrote a lot of her books after midnight with a glass of wine at her side, and she wrote a ton of books that way. Um, and one thing that I did when I was working full time was I asked to change my work hours to four tens. So I worked from six in the morning to four in the afternoon. And I loved that. That gave me an extra day uh, that I could help devote more time to writing. And actually with those times too, I missed a lot of uh, bad commuting time. Um, find little slivers of time to write. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes. You can always find something. And look at the edges of your day. I feel like there was, there's often time maybe at the beginning or the very end that you can use. Um, start small. I am on um, a website for something else where there's a community forum and there's a person on there who wants to be a writer. And he said he has to, he set a goal. He was gonna write 90 minutes every day and every day that didn't happen. Well, 90 minutes is a lot for me. I don't have that good of a concentration. For somebody who's just starting out, 
90 minutes is not going to happen. So you need to set your sights super low. In fact, uh, right now what he's doing is that every time he checks our community group message board, he after he finishes, he writes a single sentence. And that has been percolating throughout his day and allowing him to write more. You need to set your standards really low and then be happy with um, praise yourself for how you did. You wrote a sentence, you did something. I have several projects I'm working on right now where I'll put on my to-do list, just write one sentence on that project. And if I write more, great. But if I don't, I did that thing. I wrote my one sentence and I cross it off my list and I tell myself, April, you did a great job. Um, that's actually a technique that I'm working on from a book called Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg that I am very, very much enjoying. And I am so glad I got it on my Kindle. Um, well, it's actually in my iPad, but it's Kindle app. So write on your lunch hour, write when your kids are doing some kind of music lesson. Um, here's one I did. I, here's some, okay, I'm going to fess up about some naughty things I did. I used to write during meetings. I would take what looked like copious notes, but they were actually notes to myself on the book that I was writing. I might write down poison, question mark, and my handwriting is so bad that even if someone had leaned over and tried to see what I was writing, they wouldn't have been able to read it. So if you're in a long, boring meeting and you're thinking about your novel, why not check out part of the time, um, assuming you still have a job and you go places, and make notes so people think you're being productive and you are, you're just being productive in a different way. Um, I also used to, uh, okay, don't tell, but I used to, every hour I would write for five minutes um, of, at work, which is wrong and bad and I shouldn't have done it, but it did help me move my books forward. Um, Phil Marglin, when he was a full-time death penalty lawyer, used to work on weekends from 7 to 11 and his wife would watch the kids. So you don't necessarily need to write every day, although I feel like you do need a writing habit, but you decide what the writing habit is. Could you get out of the office a couple of uh, days a week if once we're back in offices again, or if you're still in an office? I mean, some of this advice applies to post-pandemic times and find a coffee shop away from work where you're not going to see your coworkers or go out to your car or a library or find a space where nobody's going to bother you at work and write during your lunch hour. Um, I have a friend who has a lot of kids and she keeps a laptop in her kitchen because she spends a lot of time in her kitchen and she is writing one line at a time in between her kids running around like crazy. Um, if you are commuting to a job, write on your commute. Mary Elizabeth, um, gosh, what's her last name? Uh, Summers, she wrote her first book on her phone with her thumbs on her commute. Now she is young, she can do that. I probably couldn't do it, but is there commute time? Some people have dictated sentences to their phone when they're stopped at a stoplight. Um, I, I heard a story a long time ago on NPR about a guy who would think about the perfect sentence that he was going to write down on his, on, as he drove to work, he wouldn't write it until he got to the parking lot and then he'd write that one line. And he actually wrote several books that way. Think about what can you give up? What can you cut back? Um, there's always, right now I spend way too much time looking at news sites and being angry. So there's time that I could give up. I'm trying to wean myself away from that, where if I read one more bad story, you know, it's not actually helping me or teaching me anything. And it's just taking away time that is precious. Um, I do feel like in, in uh, writing every day or setting up some kind of habit is very helpful. If you were at just one page a day, at the end of the year, you'd have 365 pages, which is a book. Um, unless your family, ask them to help you. I feel like people will help if you ask. And then turn off your internal editor. You can give yourself permission to write badly. You can always edit something that's bad. You can't edit nothing. And tenacity is as important as talent. People who stick with it, who work hard at it, are the people who get published. It's not necessarily the people who write the best. And we've also seen people who write one great book and flame out and never write again. I am, I uh, have been consistently published. My 25th book is coming out in July. 
So by writing in small chunks and being consistent with it and working to make my writing better, I've succeeded. So um, again, I will be answering some questions tomorrow and have uh, next week I'll be doing my last Facebook Lives. You guys have great days and 